Nathaniel Raymond. I'm the director of the Signal Program on Human Security and Technology at the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. It's my first time attending the conference, but we had a, a paper from a group of us last year, and based on how amazing the questions were uh, that led to that paper that were generated by this conference, we knew we had to be here in person this year. So we're here doing a special session talking about data, information, communication technologies, and the relevance of the Geneva Convention um, to data and ICTs. It is not only the premier venue for discussing, it is the only venue <laughs> for discussing um, data and policy together. And uh, I think it is, we're going to look back and we're going to see the early years of this conference um, as providing the platform for a broader revolution of not only a new field of study, but probably many fields of study, because we've traditionally walled off data and policy into two separate areas. And what this conference is doing is it's rightfully, especially in the age of the fourth industrial revolution driven by data, bringing them together. Um, and I think we will look back and see that as a historical achievement. The big three. Uh, one, we haven't answered a fundamental question about data as a right. Um, our, our international law, our domestic law, doesn't really answer the question um, that we're now seeing over and over again in places from Syria to Yemen, even to the United States, which is, um, is information, when it becomes a commodity, necessary for survival, rather than freedom of speech? Um, what does that mean for the laws we have and the laws we don't? Um, the second big challenge is really how do we create minimum technical standards, both for researchers, for practitioners, and for governments and communities of policy about what standard the data has to be at to be used in decisions that mean life and death with vulnerable populations in many cases. And really the third is what, how do traditional human subject research protections and questions of consent based on personally identifiable information in the 20th century um, translate into the age of demographically identifiable information and AI. Um, how do they apply? How do they fail? How are they different? When we're talking no longer just about individual data, but the data of communities. My three main impressions are, one, this is the first time I've seen these two groups, data scientists, and practitioners and policymakers in the same place having the same conversation at the same time. So that in itself is an achievement. Um, really, the second impression is we need more time. Um, these are massive conversations. These are the conversations of our era, and they're pivotal conversations. Um, we can't have them in two hours. We can't even have them in two days. Um, we need uh, more time than we have. Uh, the third impression is that this is the beginning um, of developing a grammar, an interdisciplinary grammar, to be able to have a much bigger conversation. And that bigger conversation, in many ways, has been delayed because of its interdisciplinary nature. And so, while we've discussed some of these issues in the data science community and some of these issues in the policy community, Bringing them together, my impression is it's creating not only a new language to have a conversation, but a new community that can speak it.